Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Let's Talk ABM with me, Declan Mulkeen, CMO of account-based marketing agency, Strategic ABM. ABM is one of the hottest B2B strategies right now, helping companies to win, grow and retain their most important accounts. This podcast allows me to spend some time talking to account-based marketing leaders about their ABM programs and share their insights with other B2B marketers, wherever you are on your ABM journey. So, Alice, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Alice is the CMO at Cognizant. So tell us a little bit about Cognizant and, and, and your place in, in, in the market. Sure, yeah. So Cognizant is a B2B prospecting solution. Um, So we work end-to-end and predominantly what we are founded on is a B2B data platform, um, which is globally compliant. So we provide data to sales teams and marketing teams to help them prospect. And then we also have the tools for them to execute that prospecting within our platform as well. And how long have we been around for? So Cognizant was founded in 2016. Um, and now we've hit the high growth phase of uh, the company where we've just um, in September last year, we opened an office in America, in New York. Um, and this is sort of, I guess, our high growth year um, for Cognizant, but obviously slightly tapered back now, given the current circumstances. Well, as you mentioned, the current circumstances, obviously we're living through extraordinary times. What, what have you learned on a professional or, or personal level over the last few weeks? Yeah, I think um, it's been really interesting for me, and especially um, as someone who's leading a team. So a big part of change has been how to manage a team remotely, um, especially as we actually had two new starters join the, com- join the company and our team literally the week of lockdown begun. So that was um, a really interesting dilemma in terms of how do we onboard them effectively, both so that they feel part of the team, but also so that they can start executing work as quickly as possible. Because at Cognizant being a startup, you know, we ramp people pretty quickly and throw them in at the deep end. But it's sort of perceived anyway to be harder to do remotely but I guess from this experience what I found is it's very much possible um so kind of my top tips from that were we just documented everything so we've got a thorough step-by-step playbook which is available online and we actually use a platform called Turtle so you can update it um, in real time and it's constantly there for everyone to review and see we utilize a lot of onboarding checklists and Trello is a great tool for that. Uh, regular touch points with the team throughout the day. So we have a morning and an evening stand up and then there's a drop in at lunch as well. Um, and on that point, from a social perspective, we were doing virtual lunches like we would in the first week, gave them delivery vouchers because normally they would take them out for, for their first lunch. So you're just trying to do a few things that kind of still meant that um, they felt part of a team um, and not on their own. Um, We started them on small projects and we were sort of working very closely over video. So whether it be creating their first landing page or just because tools are unfamiliar, um, Zoom was a great, great tool for us to use with that. Um, And then I think a key part was we wanted lots of drop-in meetings with them for people around the business. So I think, you know, when you go to make a tea or a coffee at lunch or during a break, you sort of meet someone, have a chat get to know them and they may not be directly influenced in your work but that's really important part of cognizant culture as well um so we just set up lots of those meetings with as many people in the business as we could um so actually we think they probably have met more people this way or spoken to them in depth than they would have done otherwise um and we just encourage all questions so we use slack and that's a great tool for us just to ping each other um and those are that's kind of what our top tips i guess for onboarding remotely have been and how's the, how's the business faring in, in these current situ- in the current situation? Um, so actually, interesting for Cognizant, um, we found that while we have had some clients whose business has been impacted negatively by the current climate, um, they've actually been what's happened is there's actually been an uptake in RCS support because they're looking at new ways in which they can go to market. So they might have relied very much on events previously, um, and now they need to find new avenues to generate those leads. So that's where our CS team can help them utilize the tool in other ways. So that's been interesting. And then from a lead generation perspective, we've actually seen an uptake in inbounds. So it shows that more people are actually out there searching for solutions right now. Um, I think the feedback from the BDM team is there's a pretty much a 50, 50 split on those who've just got more time. So Mm -hmm. using this time to look at what solutions are out there. 
um, and they also just feel more comfortable kind of doing demos and things from home. And then there's 50% who really need something right now because, again, other avenues for their lead generation have closed and they need to start exploring new ways in which to drive new business. So, so linked to that, actually, Alice, obviously there's a lot of talk um, about whether we should be selling on after the mm. Now, several weeks into, into the lockdown, as you said, what are your thoughts on that? What's the approach that you, you're taking as an organization? I think, yeah, it's a really interesting point. And... Um, very early on, like the first day we started, I got everyone on a call and just said like, one thing I want us all to be really aware of is this is a really scary situation that's affecting people, not just their livelihoods, but personally. Um, and so with every communication and every interaction we have, whether it be your customers or prospects, we just need to be, have that top of mind. Um, but we're also aware that it's a new normal. So there's no clear timeline for this ending. Um, people do want to discuss and want to know how best to tackle the issue of lead generation in the environment that we're living in now. Uh, it's a priority for businesses because it's survival. Um, so I don't think it's a case of not selling, especially for the tool and solution that we have, but it's rather of how case of how you're selling. Um, so if you're offering something that's helpful to people right now, um, like how are you messaging that you need to be careful not to forget that there's you know it's a human element to everything we're dealing with a lot of times I find people talk about b2b and say it's very different to b2c but at the end of the day it's people at the end of the phone the email all the interactions so I think there's been a, it's a really good time for people in b2b to really understand that um, and to really understand your customers and your prospects and acknowledge the current environment and just be really empathetic and so let's talk about ABM. We're both obviously operating in, in the ABM space. Let's talk about ABM and data. How do you see data changing, revolutionizing ABM? So I think data is literally the backbone of any ABM strategy. Um, without the right data, and importantly, knowing how you use that data, your ABM campaigns will most likely fail. It's vital at the start, the middle and the end. It's throughout the whole process. Uh, it gives you the ability to contact and identify those target accounts. It means it's the means by which you can personalize your campaigns. And at the end of the day, ABM is all about personalization. And it's often the trigger to taking action to, to change, iterate and alter your approach. Um, that data is what you use to inform those decisions. I think the right data provider can help create the foundation of quality, like the quality data that you need for that ABM strategy. Um, and it should always be evolving alongside the behavior of your target account. So it shouldn't be static. I think that's also really important. And if you give us a couple of examples of where you're seeing data being deployed um, effectively. Yeah. So um, I guess I, I think probably a good example is where you can start to see um, real benefit in ABM from data and how you can use it in a clever way um, is when it's becoming integrated into existing workflows and systems to provide like that consistent and accurate timely data into your campaigns. So say this is just an example, but you've been, you've got a defined list of target accounts and you've been able to map them into your CRM system with all the relevant contacts at those accounts. You've populated those, that data with multiple data points, you know, beyond the normal contact information I'm talking about like technology stack, hiring status, funding announcements. Um, and then the, importantly, that data is updated in real time. So it doesn't stagnate, doesn't become stale. Um, it's always being refreshed. Then you're able to maximize the opportunities at those accounts and make sure that you're never losing possible opportunities within that data that data pool that you have. Um, and then you can set up campaigns. This is the really clever bit based on key triggers or intent buckets, and it can all be synced up into your CRM and your marketing automation system. So you can start a really clever messaging journey. Um, you can map it out across both the different types of, again, depends what program you're running, if it's one to one, to, one, to one, one to few, one to many. Um, but you can get very clever and you start creating, you know, key data inputs that are fully synced with your systems and workflows. And then that, when those start to trigger certain events, that's when your messaging changes and alters and pushes people through the buyer journey. Um, and that personalization starts to kick in. But I think the key is that, um, the, well, the key questions you need to ask yourself around data and its best use within ABM is, do you have a way of enriching and populating contacts at your target accounts? That's number one. Do you have a way of keeping this data up to date constantly? And that's number two. And number three, do you have a means of getting intelligent data 
into your systems, whether it be intent data, trigger data. Um, and then finally, can you track all of the engagement with those accounts and contacts? And so let's just dig into that a little bit more around the sales triggers you mentioned and the data. How is that informing, in the case of yourselves, your messaging or your content strategy? Yeah, so it's really interesting. So say we have, so for example, at Cognizant, we know that um, a tech company, 11 to 50, that uses Salesforce and is hiring for SDRs right now, are an absolute sweet spot for us. So we have campaigns set up which are completely personalized to that journey and to those pain points that we know um, will ring a lot of bells with people who fit that criteria and what we can have is a bucket that people constantly drip into based on that because you're not going to have high volumes of numbers but what you are going to have is very relevant messaging um and campaign and like per uber personalized content so you know white papers that are made to look like just for that one account and that one contact at that account um and that's really powerful and we've seen a huge uptake in engagement based on that and talking about you know marketing budgets, what are you seeing that is happening out there in in the um, in the ecosystem with regards to companies? Are you seeing that they're they're coming under significant pressure, or is it just that the funds are being and the investments are, are being redirected around? I think it will really depend on the what the industry the the company is in, um, mm -hmm. and because obviously some industries have been hit harder than others but say in the SaaS tech information technology space what we've seen is actually budgets aren't being decreased but they're just being people are being made to look at how to reallocate that spend elsewhere so where events were often um, you know quite an important channel for people they might now be looking at should they invest in a virtual event or webinars or is it actually they need to start modernizing and looking at digital you know some digital channels they never used before um, so I think it's very much a case of reallocation um, in, in definitely in that industry that we've that's where we've what we've seen yeah and obviously you're you're sitting there at home so I'm sitting here at home as is everyone in the world probably now who's working um, are your customers finding it more difficult or easier to actually have conversations with their customers and their prospects? Uh, yeah, I think, so what we found is that actually people are more willing to have conversations. The difficulty is that where you might have had a data provider who had, would be giving you um, the office numbers, you now obviously can't speak to people at offices. So you need a way of um, getting their direct dials. So whether you need to make sure that you have a data provider who can give you that information or you're leveraging LinkedIn lead gen forms or some other way in which you can collect data that you can contact people at home. Mm -hmm. But yes, the feedback from, we have um, a role called a marketing development rep. It's a hybrid between sales and marketing. Um, and they follow up on all of our marketing generated requests um, and demand and they have said people are far happier to have conversations um, they seem to have potentially a bit more time um, they're just more a bit more relaxed even though given the current circumstances obviously I think the first two weeks after lockdown that wasn't the case but now that it's a new normal that that kind of is the case um, and they're definitely more open to having conversations about different ways of doing things because I think everyone's aware that there's a need for change and it's the same with our clients they're more open to learning about new ways you know different to how they had done things before previously um, and so sometimes we try and like coach on best practice but we might get push back from a client that this is the way they've done it always um, and now those conversations are a little bit easier to have and we're exploring new ways in which they can reach customers and prospects. Well actually that's linked to my last question actually Alice. Um, what advice would you give to companies looking to kind of move or try to move prospects through the funnel in terms of you know from lead to, to, to SQL whichever terminology you use there through the opportunity through the close what kind of tip would you give in the current situation the current environment so we have six things really that i think work really powerfully for us so we have a really robust handoff process with sales that's the main thing so when you're going from mql to sql however you so marketing generated demand through to sales whatever that looks like for your company make sure that it's clearly defined and it's very robust we have regular with these, this MDR role that we have, we have a weekly meeting with those reps where we get really a lot of feedback from them. Um, and it's where we will highlight upcoming campaigns and we will literally set out the steps by which they should action um, 
that demand and we make it as easy for them as possible. So a robust, robust handoff process is really key. Um, and then I kind of mentioned this, but really strong feedback loops between sales and marketing. So uh, with us having that MDR role, it's quite easy because we, they, our success is tied to their success and vice versa. So we are very aligned on that front. Um, so that feedback becomes much easier. But again, we formalize that in terms of meetings um, and then in our reporting and dashboards that we share as well. I'd say my third point would be high, introducing hybrid specialized roles is something to think about. So I think in a lot of companies, and this was this 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 was also true of Cognizant before um, four months ago, we would have an SDR and they our marketing demand would just be split out across the whole SDR team. Um, there was no one solely responsible for that. And where we've now created um, a specialized role or two specialized roles purely for that, we've seen a huge uptake um, in the number of opportunities we're able to create through that channel, especially the content channel. We now have a 10% conversion from a content download into an opportunity being created. Um, and that was sitting at more like 3% before. So I think specialized roles, and hybrid roles are really key if you can do that. Um, iterative and data-driven nurture campaigns being in place. So in order to move um, SQLs through the pipeline or MQLs through the pipeline, uh, it can't always be the case that, you know, it's a BDM's responsibility and SDRs. Marketing has a role to play as well. So make sure you have the full buyer journey set up and nurture campaigns across that journey, which you know will be feeding and enhancing the interactions they're having on a person-to-person -person basis with your sales team. Um, and then high quality sales enablement materials. I think sometimes, and I know we're guilty of it at Cognizant because we're so demand generation focused as a marketing team that we get ourselves caught up in, in, like, in saying no to any activity which is not directly linked to revenue or generating demand but actually it's so important to we know for the bdms and their closing to have the right materials mm -hmm. and the same with the sdrs and their prospecting so ensuring that your sales team have and are equipped with those materials for each stage of the buyer journey is really important as well um, and then finally data back decisions so i think right now we're actually analyzing all of our data across our pipeline and funnel weekly as opposed to just monthly um, we obviously all have our own dashboards but we have to we were reporting that up to our CRA on a weekly basis now. We're really delving in deep to see if there's any trends that are occurring and what those conversions are looking like and trying to act really quickly. And I think that's really key as well. So you might see that one channel is suddenly, you know, your SQLs to opportunity close, um, percentage has gone up drastically. Um, and it might be, you know, it might just be that more people are searching, I know, pay channel, Google ads, people, more people are searching for data right now. So actually you might make a decision that for the next two weeks, you're going to put a bit more spend there, and remove it elsewhere. So that's, that would be another. So in, in essence, you've been a lot more agile in terms of your decisions and your, and, and what you're doing and you're kind of testing and, and changing very quickly. Yeah. And that's also true of our, uh, ICP. So we had a very clearly defined ICP before this event and that had which recruitment sat firmly within that which it was listed on our website as one of our th top three personas that's all changed given the current climate um so you know we are and we're, every day we're kind of seeing new trends emerge so this month for example it's looking like SaaS information and tech is pretty much 90 percent of our pipeline that will close um and we had actually thought based on last month it was going to be marketing agency so you just have to be adaptable and agile and making decisions as you see the data fascinating alice thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today and it's been really interesting learning more about yourself and Cognizant. thanks if you enjoy this episode of let's talk abm be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted feel free to rate and review this podcast thanks so much for listening